HBO. At 8, Eddie Murphy's a heartbreaker who meets his match in Boomerang. Then at 10, Richard Gere and Jodie Foster in a story of love and war, Summersby. And at 11.55, go behind the scenes of Paul Newman's new movie, The Hudsucker Proxy, on HBO First Look. Boomerang, Summersby, and First Look. It all happens here, tonight on HBO. Undercover. Unrelenting. Unforgettable. You know, there's a common myth in our society that you can teach somebody to be homosexual. I don't believe it. The reason I don't believe it is because we have so much evidence from around the world that you cannot teach people to uh, be homosexual any more than you can teach them to be heterosexual. Why is this? It's because people have a desire. They know what their desires are. Most people are not confused about their desires. They're pretty clear what they are. Where does that desire come from? If you ask people questions, in other cultures and in our culture, they say time and time again, that's what I felt since I was really small, since I was two, three, four years old. Where does it come from? Is it the genes? Is it the brain? Is it their gonads? Something powerful inside of them is producing the most powerful attraction. They don't learn it, and some of them wish they could dislearn it, and they're equally as unsuccessful in unlearning it as they are in learning it. A lot of the people who have only wanted to have sex with people of the same sex probably were born with a very strong tendency to be that way, and that's supported by the fact that the numbers look so similar regardless of culture, which means that no matter how children are brought up, the same number of people in every single culture, more or less, um, have this pattern of behavior. I'd like to ask if we have any self-identified straight people in the audience. Would you raise your hand? And bisexual ah. hands, actually. You can raise both hands. There's one now. There's two over there. There's three. There's Do four. Do you notice how they cluster together? Mr. Sandman. I need a man. Find a man. No one psychotic or Republican. Someone who will make us scream. Oh! Quotations bill ourselves as the world's most famous openly gay, politically aware a cappella doo wop singing group. Person bring us a I was initially drawn to the world of theater. I must have been seven or eight. And I think why gay children are drawn to the theater is that it's an escape from the oppressive real world where you live and you figure out early on that it's one way to become popular for being different. Now, we don't like to generalize, but we do sometimes find that our, our straight friends do not have the flexibility in the wrist that the flirt greeting really requires. So think of this as a version of gay aerobics. We would like our straight friends to shake it out, get oh, it very loose, good. get it, all right. Very good. Oh, you're doing quite well, sir. I was thinking as the plane was landing and it was that kind of 
dull, gray, rainy, cold weather that I remember from my childhood. I've always been cold my whole life. My very earliest memories are of being tortured and tormented about feeling acutely different and knowing that something was really out of whack, that I wasn't seeing anyone in my world that looked like me or thought like me. Waves of emotion pass over me whenever I come back to the Midwest. For a long, long time, I didn't come home because it was too painful. I think this is the hospital that I was born in. Yes, this is it. Margaret Mary Hospital, Catholic Hospital. At a very, very early age, they noticed that I was different, that I was a sissy. The kids in the neighborhood decided to organize a parade. I'm leading the parade, twirling a baton. My wrists are flopping, and I'm the only boy in the front with the girls. And there's this shot of me standing next to my brother, and he's in full military drag, and uh, I'm just in pig heaven, twirling my baton. I was tortured by my sexual attraction to men because I couldn't understand it. It was very vague and amorphous. I was afraid of them, but I longed to be near them. We are coming up to my high school where I was the most tortured as a homosexual. This is the dreadful, dreadful sports field where whenever the weather was nice, we had to play baseball, do other butch things that I hated. Here in the Midwest, sports is a religion, and there is absolutely no excuse good enough to get someone out of gym. You have to do it. And I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to control my erection around guys that I was attracted to, and that if I got an erection in the shower, it would probably be the end of my life. So what I would try to do would be to lollygag and wait around and be the last to shower. But that began to be perceived as lingering in the locker room. And people would come out of the shower and flip me with wet towels, and it, they really hurt and stung. And, uh, and I remember several times waiting to be the last to shower. I would be surrounded by boys, and they would piss on me. It would form a circle around me, and they would piss on me. It was not possible to talk to anybody about what was happening to me. Um, because one, I had the sense that people would take their side. That people would say, well, but if you have these feelings, then they deserve to pee on you, or no wonder people are punching you out. And they would say silly things like they continue to say, like, well, then, so be straight as if it was something that I woke up one day and just decided, well, instead of wearing my red sweater, I'll wear my homosexual sweater. I mean, it wasn't that simple for me. Oh, please turn on your magic beam. Mr. Sandman, bring us our dream. Our dream. Mr. Sandman. Oh. Do they have like reverb and stuff like, uh, for yeah, the monitors? Rick, turn off the lobby system. That wasn't very gay. You should say, Rick, will you please turn off that lobby system? <laughs> Actually, it's very hard to sing lying down. It feels so good. You want a chair? No. The deed is going to recline. How unusual. How unusual. Oh. Well, let's try it. Your children are not your children. They are the sons and the daughters of life's doggy for itself. They come through you, but they are not from you. And though they are with you, they belong not to you. I have had full-blown AIDS for 10 or 11 years, depending on what date you want to count from. My skin is tender and peeling. 
I have the beginnings of bronchial pneumonia.